Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosemary Headley Smith, and I am the coordinator for SHDM Day 2022. For SHDM Day 2022. Master of Ceremony, Ms. Shawnee Levy, Head of School for the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, Mrs. Myrtle Ware, Guest Speaker, Ms. Ayana Duval, Major Project Coordinator, Dr. Donna Kelly, Members of Staff, Major Project Assessors and Supervisors, Students and Well-Wishers viewing us on YouTube, I deem it an honor to welcome you all to SHDM Day 2022. I also want to use this opportunity to apologize for the obvious absence of Dr. Andrea Sutherland, Dean of the College of Business and Management. She will be unavoidably late today and will address us briefly later on in the program. Our theme for today is the acronym P-A-I-R, PAIR. And it means persevering, adapting, innovating, diversifying towards a green economy. In this engagement, the spotlight is on our senior students who will showcase the results of their major project assignment. They have done a vast amount of work on their projects, but will only whet our appetites in providing us with snippets of their projects. I invite you, right where you are, open your microphones and to put your hands together in congratulating them on their hard work in preparing for this, their exit from the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. Can we all just put our hands together for the students? And that means students, you can applaud yourselves too. <laughs> Wonderful. It is with heart and gratitude that I welcome you all today and I trust that your time with us will be mutually and positively fruitful. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I now hand my virtual baton on to today's Master of Ceremony, Chef Shani Levy. She's a lecturer in the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. She has a wealth of knowledge, competency, and expertise in both academic and the culinary fields. And she is an absolute asset to our college and school. Over to you, Chef Levy. And thank you for being our master of ceremony for today. Thank you, Mrs. Headley Smith. And I appreciate the introduction. Good morning, everyone. I'll say it again. Good morning, Wave. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning. We are Good morning, Chef. Pictures. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. All right. So thank you for joining us at our virtual 2022 SHTM day. And I know from personal experience that our SHTM students are some of the most talented, hardworking, and forward-thinking students here at UTech. I've had many of you in my class, and I can see your, the potential that you all have. And I know you're going to put all of that together in your, one of your top classes and show us what you have today. Now, as a tribute to the land that we all love, join me in singing the national anthem.
Now, I'd like to introduce somebody who I hold very dear to my heart, our hardworking major project coordinator, Dr. Get Donna Kelly, who will deliver our invocation. Dr. Kelly. Good morning. Thank you very much, Chef. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. We have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet, and he never will. Sovereign God, mighty God, we give you praise and thanks this morning, for indeed it is a morning like none we have seen before and one we will never see again. We thank you that you have clothed us this morning in our right minds. You have set us on our path. You have placed us above our graves this morning and Lord, we just lift our hands in praise and thanks to you. God, we thank you that you have kept us and preserved us for this moment. So many things would have changed in the last two years. And God, we thank you for your insight and your wisdom and your creativity to be able to navigate and change with the times. As we come today for SHTM Day, we place before you our students, our administrative and academic leaders, faculty members, administrative staff, and ancillary staff. Lord, we want to thank you for the University of Technology Jamaica. We give you praise for this institution. We commit today to you, dear God, and we say, have your own way. Lord, we thank you for the projects that the students have toiled over, for the insights and the knowledge that you have given them in preparing these projects, in understanding, in writing. And so now, Lord, we declare that the purpose that you have established over their lives from the very foundation of the earth, that they will walk into that purpose. We place a ceremony and the proceedings, the events, Lord, cover the airway even now, and we place them in your hands, and we give you thanks that indeed we will have a great day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Dr. Kelly. We needed that. Thank you very much. Now, I don't know if all of you know, but it's champs, all right? I know it's champs. I love champs. And I'm going with a champs theme today. So I'm passing the baton on to the captain of our SHTM team, to Mrs. Myrtle Ware, the head of school of the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. Okay. Good morning, everyone. What a mighty God. Good morning, Mrs. Ware. Good morning, everyone. Morning, morning. Colleagues, students, what a wonderful day. After that prayer, what else could we ask the Lord to do but continue to bless us? I look forward to a wonderful day today. Thanks, Dr. Kelly, Mrs. Hedley Smith, Chef Shal Kelly Levy, Miss Elliot, and the tech support team. Students, this day is about you. We are pairing our talents today for you to showcase what you have done over the past year, two years, so that we can show the world that SHTM, School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, is the premier school in the Caribbean. And to those who are joining us in the other virtual world, since we are virtually everything in today, batoning, etc. cetera, Champs is real. My Casey husband will confirm it is real. But I just want to thank, um, the team, Dr. Kelly, supervisors, assessors who are here, and most importantly, the students who are the purpose of our work in this school. So as we peer, um, preserve, preserving, adapting, innovating, diversifying towards a green economy, we are ready. SHTM students, go there and show the world that you are ready to be a part of this green economy and to contribute in a positive way. Thanks everyone, congratulations, and I look forward to an excellent day today. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mrs. Ware. Thank you very much. All right. So for those of you that are just joining us, welcome to SHTM Virtual Day 2022. Now the next young lady who is up, she is not only a member of our, your major project class, she was also one of my very sassy students in a la carte one over at Lillian's who had no problem telling me what was on her mind every Monday morning. I would like to introduce Miss Kamoya Nemhard. Thank you, Chef Levy. I'll now be introducing our guest speaker, Ayana Duval. Ms. Duval is a graduate of the University of Technology, Jamaica, and UA Mona, where she pursued studies in the hospitality and tourism management and food and beverage. During her 14 year plus in the hospitality and tourism industry, she successfully made contributions in areas of food and beverage, environment, health, safety, quality management, along with training and development. Her knowledge and exposure span both European and all-inclusive resort operations. She is also a certified heart NSTA assessor and part-time educator at Kelly Ford Heart NSTA Academy. Ms. Duval is currently the training and development manager at Secrets and Breathless Resorts and Spas, where her role includes coordinating employee engagement activities, along with careful planning and management of both hotels training and development programs for all levels of employees, that is. Her passion for teaching and endearing people skills has transformed the lives of many employees and has aided in the promotion of several into leadership positions within that said company. Ms. Duval is a lover of international cuisine and enjoys cool beach days and community initiatives. She strongly believes in Mr. Tim Nutke's quote, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you today's keynote speaker, Miss Ayana Duval. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Kamaya. Mrs. Myrtle Weir, head of school. Dr. Andrea Sutherlandine of the college and major project coordinator, Dr. Donna Kelly, members of the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, students and other specially invited guests and well wishers, good morning and welcome everyone. There is something unique about starting, graduating or completing a course of study. It affords us the opportunities available for upward mobility, personal growth and development. This helps you, the student, to achieve your short-term or long-term goals for your career advancement. The hospitality industry has significantly changed over the last decade and has seen Jamaica's income now at several billions of dollars. And since the reopening of the tourism industry, as of October, 2021, Jamaica has already earned 1.7 billion in US dollars. What does this mean for you? It means that you can become a primary earner in this rewarding field. Industry trends have shown that tourist destinations are focused more on innovation. And this has now created a thriving business environment where amenities are now more luxurious doubled with aesthetics that rival with any five diamond international hotel. Disruptive technology is an innovation that has significantly altered the management of the travel and tourism industry. And it has also replaced recognizably superior products and services it's, and it's, that its consumers use as well. In Jamaica, accommodations are now equipped with state-of-the-art technology. For example, guest room tablets provide convenience in a simple, straightforward upgrade that improves guest satisfaction and scores virtually instantaneously high for the resort. Tablets like those from Crave 
interactive allows our guests to customize their experience at will. Booking spa appointments, taking advantage of food and beverage offers and exploring local tourism. And especially for our savvy marketing managers, tablets provide a new channel through which to send targeted automated messages that generate significant gains in additional revenue. Remotes that control anything from room temperature, opening and closing of drapes and personal music selections. These features continue to elevate Jamaica as a premier travel and tour destination for international travelers. Students, higher prices beget higher expectations and increased levels of satisfaction. As, asp as aspiring service professionals, you must keep up with this fast pacing industry. Be open because change is constant. Adopting modern sustainability practices in the hospitality industry is no longer an option. I remember many years ago, the only practice many hotels had adopted was the conserve card, where the housekeeping department would place environmentally friendly cards on top of guest beds to en encourage guests to use the hotel's products and services in an environmentally friendly way. Now, this practice is a standard across many popular hoteliers who were initially hesitant to implement this simple yet impactful practice. So now let's fast forward to the new normal. The new normal now has us featuring motion sensors being installed in guest rooms and varying public areas. In the guest rooms, it's used to restrict the use of air conditioning units. Aerators are now installed in every faucet to control the flow of water. Timers are connected to fully integrated maintenance management computer systems. And guest rooms are constructed now with buzzers that have now replaced a simple knock on a guest door. Privacy lights have now been installed and this feature only requires one quick touch by the guest for activation. Tangible menus are now, moved, are now becoming a thing of the past and food and beverage outlets are moving towards plastic and paperless menu systems. It has also improved the accuracy and efficiency of up-to-date menu offerings for guests by the implementation of QR codes. These QR codes are now used for check-in and check-out processes as well. Hostesses as well no longer have printed room listings as iPads have replaced that outdated model. Cages and beepers are used to alert guests in close proximity of the restaurant of their dining times. And how could we forget? The COVID-19 pandemic brought with it its own share of modern technology as well. So for example, in order for the industry to be reopened, thermal camera scanners had to be installed in strategic locations across most resorts. So at entrances, exits, key high traffic guest areas, all of these areas had to be covered. And many people did not even know that their temperatures were being detected because of how carefully these devices were positioned and they reflect a normal camera um, feature. Automatic hygiene stations are now equipped with audible devices. So these devices can pretty much tell you everything from the soap that's being dispensed, the water that's being dispensed, even the temperature is saying allowed. These devices, including many others, were critical in the reopening of the industry. And without them, many hotels would not have been able to meet industry and international health and safety protocols. This simply became our new normal. The demand as well for natural and man-made resources has also impacted the day-to-day -day operation of accommodations. Many of our engineers and scientists have been challenged to review lighting and water features and incorporate more efficient solutions to minimize cost. Smart hotel technology includes digital interfaces that control lighting and temperature. Entertainment now available for streaming on any device and sensors that reduce usage during specific hours or when the guest room 
is not in use. Energy saving equipment have been replaced in most key operational areas. So including a simple clothing iron, those have been replaced by handheld steamers that have automatic shut off devices. LED lighting has also replaced most halogen lights and lighting in public areas are controlled by computerized systems. Gray water recycling and osmosis, desalination plants are now hallmarks of sustainable programs. And at the resort we are based, we have just broken ground on our, on our osmosis plant. The recycled water for faucets, showers, tubs are used to maintain the lush landscapes that bolster our sun, sun and sea and ecotourism concepts. Several companies have well have adopted a vertically integrated structure that attracts and sustains lifelong partnerships between customer and company. The customer's experience is impacted from the first booking, airport transfer and hotel stay. And this process is continuously looped and keeps the customer engaged. What do I mean by this? So for example, most brands now have online and travel partnerships. So the guest directly books with them. The guest goes on their airline partners. They are picked up by their transportation providers, taken to the resort and the process repeats itself. Customer loyalty reward programs have also served as a measure of increasing and sustaining guest retention. These reward programs are global. They include the Unlimited Vacation Club, Disney and even Marriott brands are, are some of the few. Guests have the privilege of benefiting from discounts and five-star rated treatment. And this cause, this brings forth longevity in the business. So these guests become lifelong members. And even if the guest does not want to travel anymore, they're able to pass on that loyalty membership plan to any family member. There are also guest retention systems, for example, customer relationship management systems. And these are online systems that can manage in excess of 117 review channels that help to drive revenue, track profit margins as well, and keep all hoteliers in check as it relates to their service standards. The use of cashless registers have been implemented, which only requires the guest to provide his or her name and room number. So these transactions are processed and it has also improved additional security. That leads me into what has transpired since the pandemic. So the pandemic has made us realize that safety and security is critical. So management has to invest in multi-layered security systems, data, product, data protected systems that support secure transactions and comply as well with international standards and data privacy standards. Camera systems, ladies and gentlemen, no longer look like cameras. They are no longer designed as cameras. They can be retrofitted into any safety device or any portable device. And they are used to protect critical storage areas within resorts. Loss prevention directors now incorporate social media to get better acquainted with candidates prior to their first interview. Everyone wants the best talent, and that's also used as a means of getting to know that person. Fingerprints, face scans are used for property access and also for accurate payroll purposes. Emergency systems as well have been installed to detect gas leaks and excessive smoke in areas. And these are just to name a few. With that being said, human resources hasn't been left out. We realize and recognize that the Green Revolution impacts us wholeheartedly. So human resources has pivoted. Many interviews are conducted online. Many systems are drafted for potential employees to upload resumes, pictures, and any other support that may aid them in being a successful candidate. Social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, are now linked to many famous brands. And now most clients are now finding out their success if they're successful or not via emails. 
So despite all the innovation that has taken place in the sector over the last decade, there remains massive untapped opportunity and potential in many categories within the hospitality arena. Technology is becoming more important to hotel operations because it can deliver increasingly high value for hoteliers and guests. Many hotel managers, technology specifically designed to manage hotel operations, reservations, housekeeping, and more, because we realize that it not only helps us to achieve greater efficiency, but it also reduces fewer human errors. At the same time, technology can unlock more convenient and personalized stay experiences for our guests. Technology advances the hospitality industry by allowing hoteliers to run more efficient operations and by giving guests opportunities to personalize their experiences. If you've never known that managing, for example, a hotel the size of 500 rooms, 700 rooms, or even 1,000 rooms, will find, you, will find you paying double digits in both water and energy consumption, which is quite, which is considerably um, impactful to one's profit margin. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to stay on the cusp of what is new what is relevant. If you don't innovate well, your brand will plateau. The successful exploitation of new ideas is crucial to any business being able to improve its processes, bring new and improved products and services to its current and prospective customers. Do you want to be successful? I, I, I ask you to leave here making yourself this promise as I have been doing myself. Promise yourself to be strong that nothing can disturb your peace. To talk health and happiness and prosperity to every person you meet. To make all friends feel that there's something worthwhile in them. To look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true. To think only of the best to work only for the best and to expect only the best. To be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. To forget the mistakes of the past and pass on to greater achievements. To wear a cheerful expression and always, and give a smile to every living person you meet. To give so much time to improving yourself that you have no time to criticize others. To be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. To think well of yourself and to this fact to the world, not, to, not in loud words, but in great deeds. To live in the faith that the whole world is on your side so as long as you're true to the best that is in you. Ladies and gentlemen, to exist in the hospitality industry means you must be hospitable. Ladies and gentlemen, it was indeed my pleasure to share these words with you this morning. All the best in your final presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Val. Thank you, thank you. Now, for the next person I'm going to present, anybody on campus knows he needs no introduction. He is what we would call the all-rounder on the student council, volunteering, helping in other classes. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. Amaria Taylor. Thank you, Ms. Levy. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks to Ms. Ayanna Duval, our keynote speaker for SHMD 2022. First, I wish to thank you for setting a pace for us, the current students, to follow. Being a graduate of this awesome institution, emphasis on awesome, and working in such an enviable position, it is evident that we too can attain great heights in our academic and professional lives. For this inspiration, we say a profound thank you. Today, you reminded us that personal studies at the University of Technology, of course, can and will provide us the opportunity for upward mobility and personal growth and development which no doubt will guide us to certainly aspire for excellence 
within the hospitality and tourism industry. You also informed us that the hospitality sector is a dynamic and diverse industry. And consequently, we should always aim for open-mindedness. On behalf of the major project cohorts, please accept our word of gratitude. And we wish you all the best in your professional journey. Please accept this electronic certificate as an expression of our appreciation for your presence here today. Once again, thank you, Mr. Wah. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you very much. Now, without much ado, I'm going to pass it on to the members of group number one. Good afternoon, good morning again. Ah, uh, yes. So, let us start. <laughs> Did you know that approximately 56 million marine animals die each year simply because we as domestic households dump our used cooking oils down our kitchen sinks and drains? <laughs> you didn't know that, right? Good morning, listeners. Good morning, viewers. Representing my awesome team from Green Oil Solutions Limited. I will be displaying our virtual booth on our research topic, investigating the conversion of domestically produced used coconut oil into usable products. It has come to my team and I awareness that we as domestic households do not have the option to properly dispose of our used coconut oil. Instead, what we do, we dispose of our used coconut oil in our kitchen sinks and drains. And the problem is, when we do this, the sustainability of the environment is drastically affected. I mean, there's increased climate change, the disruption and suffocation of aqu aqu aquatic plants and animals, the clogging of sewer, sewer pipes are just some of the negative impacts of the improper disposal of our used cooking oil. So how can we mitigate these unnecessary impacts? Well, with the implementation of a collection service to facilitate the disposal of domestically produced used cooking oil by the installation of smart used cooking oil collection machines, in community supermarkets. Now, imagine getting raw cash for your used cooking oil. You will love that, don't <laughs> I know. We will use this collected waste oil to manufacture and market household products, which would demonstrate the versi versatility and reusability of domestically produced used cooking oil. My awesome team and I strongly believe that this strateg these strategies have great potential to mitigate the identified adverse environmental and infrastructural impacts of the improper disposal of our used cooking oil. <laughs> they say I talk too much. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Green Oil Solutions Virtual Booth. Welcome to Green Oil Solutions Limited. Come, let us take a closer look. To the frontal left of the booth is our infographic display, which gives an overview to the issue and our proposed solutions. Information is stated. Prototype use cooking oil collection machine. Next, we have our product display section of the booth. This section also showcases a virtual reality screen complemented with our virtual reality headset that demonstrates the functionality of each product. Finally, we have our support desk section. This area is equipped with additional information. In the middle is our holographic display that illustrates the entire process of collecting the used people right down to the manufacturing process of the products. Thank you for visiting Green Oil Solutions Limited. Thank you. All right, thank you, group number one. We're going to pass on the baton to group number two. All right, good morning, everyone. So I am presenting, I have the joy of presenting for my group members. Our topic was investigating the branding of Portland as a luxury destination. So Portland was once the pinnacle of tourism, and everybody knew that it's where tourism began in Jamaica. So, but now Portland has some negativity, such as minimal visitor benefit, a limited marketing strategy, and the most the least workers in the tourist sector. 
Therefore, my group members and I, after a lot of consideration, came up with Portland's very own destination management company called Deluxe. I will now present our booth. I hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to our booth displayed by Deluxe, Portland's very own destination management company. In this virtual presentation, highlighted are Portland's luxury offerings. At the entrance of our booth is a kiosk that is strategically placed with easy access for visitors to display deluxe official websites and social media pages and with a QR code for our guests to scan to provide direct access on their own device. On the left side of the booth, we start with the precise location of Port Antonio, Portland and a brief background on the parish. Following this, we have two of Portland's most unique and glamorous attractions, Trident Hotel and the Blue Mountain. Our company uses state-of-the-art technology to display our diverse options of our luxury itineraries and a multitude of must-see luxury locations in Portland, depicted using a slideshow. Here we have a multi-level display of our company's magazine titled Jamaica's Luxury Destination. It details luxury accommodations in Portland such as GGM Hotel, attractions like Blue Lagoon and Monkey Island, and popular food spots such as Boston Jerk Center. Displayed here, we have more of Port Antonio's captivating attractions, as well as Blue Heaven, one of her prospective attractions that we someday hope to develop on Navy Island, one of Portland's neighboring islands. That was the end of our presentation. Thank All you. All right. Thank you very much, group number two. All right. Group number three, team three, you're up. Your turn. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kamisha Good, and I will be the presenter today on behalf of group three. Our topic is the impact of imported foods on the food security of Jamaica. We investigated how the lack of food security and in dependence on imported foods to feed the population affects its citizens. And as such, 
We explored avenues and ways to reduce the dependence on imports and improve our food security. From this, we have proposed an agency which will incorporate four frameworks. There are such crop scheduling, seed banking, niche marketing, and surplus storing. Presented on the screen will be our solution in the form of a 3D virtual booth. We ask that everyone just sit back, relax, and give us two minutes of their time. Welcome to the virtual booth of Building a Better Jamaica Cooperation, an agency working to target the issue of food insecurity in Jamaica as it relates to our high importation levels by revitalizing Jamaica's agricultural sector to sustain the demand of the population. How may you ask? Firstly, it's through the education and training on the importance of crop scheduling, as you can see represented by a miniature farm. Crop scheduling involves scheduling the period in which specific plants should be planted, as well as scheduling or determining the lands or areas they should be planted in. However, land scheduling must be carried out first before one can crop schedule. Next is through our innovative seed bank, where the gene of plants are manipulated and modified to adequately resist hostile conditions and yield better crops. A seed bank is a storehouse for seeds or vegetated tissue kept in low temperature and humidity to help maintain genetic diversity. Our operations would not be possible without our main facilities, where we could conduct our meetings with our partners and our training classes with the farmers, working with them to teach them how to maintain their farms and manage their yield. Our building will also host our surplus storage area which will store the surplus of fruits or produce when they are in season, so they may be available outside of their season as well. This storage area is a temperature and humidity controlled environment where the shelf life and quality of the stored items can be lengthened and maintained. To take our agency a step further is to partner up with local restaurants, chefs, and entrepreneurs to produce and manufacture products that are not only made in Jamaica, but curated from ingredients grown in the local soil. Lastly, our agency works to market the importance of buying local to the residents of Jamaica, as the health of our economy rests in their hands. Channeling our marketing efforts to specific target groups that indicates a demand for the product. Thank you for visiting our booth, where we are building a better Jamaica for Jamaicans. That is the end of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, group number three. Thank you very much. Moving right along, group number four. Good morning, my fellow colleagues, coordinators, Dr. Kelly, and all esteemed guests on behalf of my group members and I. We will be presenting on our research entitled Leveraging the Creative Industry, Exploring the Use of Junk Art in Greening Jamaica's Tourism Product. For this research, we identified the problem of Jamaica's creative industry being underutilized, and as well as issues of improper waste disposal. A museum was derived as a solution which would be used in utilizing the creative industry in the form of junk art aiming simultaneously to solve the problem of improper waste disposal in public areas whilst benefiting the tourism industry. The museum will showcase art pieces made from junk materials. This would aid in highlighting Jamaica's art tourism as persons would travel in view, as persons would travel to view these pieces. We will now present our virtual booth. Please enjoy. Good day, everyone. Today we will be presenting on our booth based on our research topic, leveraging the creative industry, exploring the use of junk art in greening Jamaica's tourism product. 
We would like to begin with highlighting the case of Jamaica being blessed with creative individuals. For so long, we have always been known for innovative ideas and turning our hand to make fashion. Being creative is innate within many Jamaicans. From the young children building trucks from juice boxes and corks to the local handicraft vendors creating bowls and jewelry made from coconut husks are just a few examples that support our topic choice. We have always been creative, but opportunities and platforms that would help to boost this creativity has been very few and underutilized. Welcome to the Jamaica Waste to Art Museum's virtual booth presentation. The booth aims to showcase the usage of junk material that can be repurposed into art pieces. With sustainability being a key factor, the booth highlights this factor with an earth tone theme. Our flooring is made from broken tiles of various kinds to create a unique look and a pop of color. The two side walls are made from sustainable timber. On the left side wall is a television mounted that displays a slideshow of images of beach and community cleanups, the junk art making process, and the final creation. Our roof contains eight recessed eco-friendly light bulbs to give the entire booth exceptional lighting. For our display, there are three standing shelves that houses art pieces made from plastic, paper, and metal with their representation at the top of each. For each of these three types of junk material, Three art pieces are displayed to showcase the creation of discarded materials that are repurposed into beautiful items of value. Above these art pieces are six light bulbs that aid in highlighting the amazing quality of the creations. Additionally, the booth has a table which holds miniature art pieces and accessories made from junk materials such as necklaces, earrings, keychains, and others for sale. Alongside these miniature items are pamphlets that provide relevant information as well as clipboards that will log the names of individuals who are interested in being a part of the museum's initiative. Thank you all so much for stopping by our booth today. We have high hopes that this presentation has highlighted the booth and museum's purposes and has shed a brighter light on the creative industry. Thank you very much, group number four. Moving on, moving on. Team number five. Team number five, you're up. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kamwe Nemhard, and I am the representative for group five. We conducted extensive research on the topic of environmental degradation due to the development of built attractions and the exploitation of natural attractions in Jamaica. Thereafter, we explored our service solution being a sustainability advocacy organization, giving nature a voice. Without further ado, welcome to Sweet Home Jamaica. Sweet Home Jamaica is a sustainable development advocacy nonprofit organization created as a proposed service solution after doing extensive research on the problem of environmental degradation due to the development of built attractions and the exploitation of natural attractions in Jamaica. Let us meet the lovely ladies who gracefully executed this project. Come on, I'm hard. Natasia Banton, Shalisha Bailey, Vanessa Edwards, and Benice Anderson. Here you can find the contact information for Sweet Home Jamaica. Welcome to our virtual booth. Outside, we can see our banner with logo and our topic sentence. Inside, we can find our model office space adhering to the 10 by 10 feet ratio. Our walls and floors are constructed from reclaimed wood. Our choice of paint beautifully complements the sustainable development art hanging off the walls. The live plants and our self-sustaining fish tank adds a natural feel to our office space. All furniture is made from organic 
or recycled material. Along the four corners, we can find our mission and vision statements, goals and objectives, and our initiatives, which includes, but is not limited to beach cleanup campaigns and reforestation initiatives. Along this space, we can find our information brochures and refreshments, which are served in a biodegradable containers. Here is where the magic happens, giving nature a voice. As the reggae artist Tinga Swartz said, knowing a better than yard, join our initiative so that we can take care of home, not only for the present, but also the future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much, group number five. Moving on, moving on. Group number six, you're up. Group number six. Good morning, everyone. My name is Renee Tebow. The topic me and my group members research is special interest tourism, leveraging health and wellness and agritourism to diversify accommodation types. Jamaica has been marketed as a sun, sea and sand destination, attracting a majority of coastal tourists. As a result, most accommodations are constructed on the coastlines of Jamaica, which according to the literature, this construction causes degradation to ecosystems. Hendrickson 2020 stated that to mitigate these impacts, the country must diversify its tourism product. According to Angelo and Vladimir 2011, the focus should be placed mostly on the accommodation sector, which has been proven to be the most important factor in the traveler's decision-making process. In diversifying accommodation sector, the country must now focus on marketing and promoting the destination to travelers interested in traveling for the purpose of their interests. After reviewing the extant literatures, the researchers decided that to mitigate and control the issues of limiting the tourism product and degrading the environment, they have proposed a solution of a construction consultancy agency. The agency will guide hotel operators in constructing environmentally friendly alternate accommodation. The name of this agency is Green Accommodation Construction and Consultancy. This is our virtual boot. Thank you. That is the end of our presentation. Thank you once more. Thank you very much, group number six. Thank you very much. Now we're going to take a very small break for some entertainment from some of our, our UTEC students. Take it away.
All right. Fantastic. Ion Lion Zion. Moving on, moving on. Team number seven. I hope you are ready. Are you <laughs> team number seven? Thank you so much, Chef Levy. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Deidre Plummer, and I will be representing for Group 7. Our topic is examining Jamaica's climate change adaptation plan to protect coastal tourism. So with that being said, um, Jamaica, as we know, climate change has been an ongoing issue in all industry, especially the tourism, and if we're being more specific, in coastal tourism. So um, Jamaican, the Jamaican government actually made up two adaptation plans. The first one is the climate change policy framework for Jamaica in 2015. And more recently, Jamaica's nationally determined contribution NDC implementation plan in 2020. But with that being said, and our um, research that we've done, we are not seeing how these plans are being implemented to protect coastal tourism. With that being said, we did, we, we as a team made up a, non-governmental organization called Jamaica Climate Change Implementi Implementers. And this is our booth. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our 10 by 10 booth layout for our topic, examining Jamaica's climate change adaptation plan to protect coastal tourism. The solution we as a team will be implementing is a non-governmental organization called Jamaica Climate Change Implementers, also known as JCCI. First, we enter through a wooden trellis, which is partly covered with some beautiful bogan villas, which gives the booth a more natural feel, and it also hosts our logo for JCCI, with our motto, Protect with Course. We will also be passing by a poster that shows how the coast will be affected if the mangroves are destroyed. As we enter the booth, we will be greeted by our receptionist, who is stationed behind one of our wooden sustainable desks, which also accompany various office supplies. On her right is a wooden wall structure that has an aquarium, which hosts various marine lives that are native to Jamaica. On the walls are also different posters that show the effects climate change has on coastal tourism. We will be heading into the next office, which is our boardroom. This boardroom accommodates a projector and a table. This is where we talk all things climate change on Jamaica's coast and also where all our ideas with our collaborations are formed. On this wall, there is a dramatic illustration of how Earth is feeling because no one is taking climate change seriously. Now, I will be Thank you. That is the rest of our booth. Thank you very much, team number seven. And moving on, we're going to team number eight. Team number eight, you're up. Thank you. Good morning to my colleagues, coordinators and most esteemed guests. Team 8's topic is examining the effects of social isolation on the eating habits of adolescents in Papine, St. Andrew, Jamaica. Based on the research, we have found that due to social isolation and unhealthy eating habits, adolescents are not eating as healthily as they should. Therefore, we're providing the solution of a nutritionally balanced, pre-portioned, pre-packaged meal, nutritionally meal. 
We came to this conclusion that the schools have already provided a breakfast feed-in program and PATH covers their lunch. However, the dinner portion is open and that is where we will fill that gap. Nutritionally Me encourages adolescents to foster healthy eating habits, to sustain healthy growth and development. We will now present our virtual booth. Examining the effect of social isolation on the eating habits of adolescents in Papin, St. Andrew, Jamaica. In keeping with COVID-19 protocols, we are kindly asking that you have your temperature checked, sanitized, and without further ado, welcome to Nutritionally Me, where it's not just food, it's life. To the right of our booth will be our reception area fitted with a display screen with a slideshow depicting important health information pertaining to our topic of unhealthy eating habits among adolescents and the effect these habits can have on the development of the body. There our company's description as well as information on the numerous product offerings will also be on display. A member of our team will also be positioned in this area to courteously invite you in to view our booth and to answer any questions that you may have. On the left and center rear walls stands two health corners where company brochures and other educational pamphlets from the Ministry of Health about the negative effects on healthy eating habits can cause to the development of adolescents and their bodies. In the rear left corner of the booth will be a display refrigerator showcasing our numerous healthy dinner meal options sure to appeal to our targeted adolescents and other guests. In the rear right corner will be the food preparation area fitted with a sink for sanitation purposes and a microwave for the quick reheating of the meal packages to allow for guests to sample and offer their valuable feedback. On the tabletop will be a depiction of one of our nutritionally balanced, pre-portioned, pre-packaged meals, appealing to adolescents to try this option against that of the unhealthier pizza option. On exiting the booth, feel free to grab a juicy fruit or fresh vegetable tray from our feature wall on the left, encouraging you to foster healthy eating habits to sustain healthy growth and development. Thank you for stopping by Nutritionally Me, where it's not just food, it's life. Thank you. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much, team number eight. Thank you. And up oh, now, team number nine. Team number nine. To our esteemed guests, my fellow colleagues, persons who are streaming live on a YouTube platform, a pleasant morning is extended to you all. Our research paper was centralized on the enclave tourism model and how this concept fosters exclusivity of the host communities in Montego Bay. These enclavic facilities provide all-inclusive packages, and this, ladies and gentlemen, highlights the pinnacle of the issue, exclusivity. Because of these facilities, visitors are segregated from the host communities and are not able to indulge and experience the authentic Jamaican experience. Also, SMEs and other entities outside of the enclaves are inadequately benefiting from tourist expenditure. To address the primary concern of the outlined issue, the proposed solution is to create a destination marketing organization referred here as the JSDA, Jamaica Sustainable Tourism Alliance. We aim to increase the awareness and market the availability of alternate accommodations and experiences outside on all-inclusive resorts via a mobile application platform called Room to Room. 
Relax and be amazed, ladies and gentlemen, at our booth displayed, my group and I work earnestly to achieve. I'm sorry, um, Tiana, did you check share sound? You guys not hearing it? No love. All right, Tiana, let me see if I can assist you. Could you stop sharing? Hey there, we invite you to Step on in and be immersed in authenticity, new environments, exotic experiences, and encourage you to leave nothing but your footprints. Welcome to the Jamaica Sustainable Tourism Alliance, where we pride ourselves in linking all stakeholders through sustainable and inclusive development solutions. Come journey with me on this path to explore the wonders outside of the enclaves. Watch your step, ladies and gentlemen, while we trod on this unbeaten path. Oops, be careful. Watch your steps as we stumble upon the tail of Annie Palmer, the famous white witch of Rosal. After a good shake in your boots, you can unwind and relax at Fairway Manor, a boutique resort, or indulge in other local activities. After all, it is more fun with the people. To our immediate left, our logo is displayed which bears our brand's identity. The overlapping hands in a circular motion highlights unity of all stakeholders, steering the industry into a holistic, inclusive, and a wholesome sector. The trees, mountainous rages, and the allocentric traveler advocates a shift in the narrative from sun, sand, and sea. Directly below our logo, ladies and gentlemen, you will find our vision and mission statement, which clearly defines the fundamental building blocks of our organization. 
to our extreme right, interact with our professional and friendly staff who is rearing and ready to address all your inquiries about our product service. At our desk, grab a pamphlet or a business card and tuck it into your purse or wallet. Glance at the varying images on the wall under the heading Inclusive Approach. They allude to wholesomeness and sustainability. However, the images under the heading Non-Inclusive Approach insinuates dominance and exploitation. Such relays the relevance of our solution. Refresh yourself, ladies and gentlemen, with a freshly picked jelly coconut and watch a quick advertisement of our Room to Roam application. Ladies and gentlemen, to achieve longevity, sustainability, wholesomeness, and all in all a holistic tourism industry, it is quite pivotal that all stakeholders are actively involved in developing and disseminating the tourism product. This summarizes the fundamental core values of the Jamaica Sustainable Tourism Alliance. Thank you. Thank you very much, team number eight. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the College of Business and Management, Dr. Andrea Sutherland, who's going to say a few words for us. Dr. Sutherland, all you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, head of school, Mrs. Myrtle Ware. Oh, let me just um, start my video. I'm getting a note here. Okay. I apologize for the background. I'm not sure what happened. I could not get your background up, but I do have the UTEP background. Sorry about that. Um, head of school, Mrs. Myrtle Ware, um, facilitators, members of staff, students, other members of the university community, especially invited guests, good morning. It is really my pleasure today to bring greetings to SHTM Day and um, a very special day in the college as well as the school. And the fact that, you know, hospitality and tourism management um, is being done virtually, I think, um, speaks to exciting times. I'd just like to say, you know, I've been impressed so far for what I've seen from the students. Congratulations to you. I can see that you have put in a lot of hard work. I, I think we can't, um, 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 I, I, I don't think we can celebrate this day without, you know, looking at the the, the significant negative impact that has that that we have borne as a school of hospitality and tourism management, and as an industry that you know that has been so severely impacted, I think more than any other industry because of the COVID nineteen pandemic. But as in everything else, it has provided opportunities, and you know we have seen we are here today in a virtual environment. Who knew that this would have been possible, you know, 15, 20 years ago? So it also creates opportunities. And, you know, we are, we are seeing many things coming out in technology and all of that. And so I think as students, 
you really should um, look at, you know, getting involved in some of the technological advances that are taking place in your, in your industry. Because certainly, I think coming out of this pandemic, we will see many more persons who will maybe want to engage in, in that way with the industry. Not to say that, um, you know, what the mainstays that have been here before will not remain, but certainly I think that we should begin to think about the technological advancements and how those can be infused in tourism, in tourism today, especially with all the challenges we're having, you know, with fuel prices, um, you know, geopolitical tensions all over the place, we may find that that may be an option that persons who would participate in, in, in this industry would like, to, would like to use in order to, you know, get a, get a breather. If you can't travel, if it's too expensive, you may want to engage um, in this manner. So I applaud you as students um, to, to, to be able to present what you are because <clears throat> at some point in the future, this is where this is how you may be you, you may be required to present your offerings to the wider public. So it is good that you are getting this experience because you know, as I said, out of everything that has happened, we must seek the opportunities. As sad and um, as as COVID nineteen was for us, it has made, it has allowed us to look at things in a very different way than we would have done not, you know, before. So I think it's, it's very good that you, that you are able to do this. And, and so I think you, you should seek those opportunities. The other thing I'd like to say is that um, I, I think, uh, you know, hospitality and tourism management, we are in a time when a lot of persons timing our time, their time management is the most important thing to them. And again, it comes back to technology because we are finding that there are so many ways, the things that we normally do, the means we prepare, uh, the way we dine, and you know, technology infused in everything. And again, because of some of the challenges that we have been faced with over time. And so in bringing you these greetings, I would just like you to, you know, I know you have the drive, you have the energy, you know, many of you have not slept for days, but, um, and you would probably sleep for the next two days, but don't lose what you, but what I'm seeing here today, that drive, that energy, that out of the box thinking that has made, that, 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 that has made you be, be able to bring to the fore for us today, right? Because that is clearly out of the box thinking that you have brought, brought to us today. So I implore you to continue to do that, to not be um, dissuaded by the many challenges because they will come. And I think, especially in these times, you will have even more challenges and some of them may seem daunting, but I implore you, you are young, you are brilliant, you're creative, you're innovative. And also you have an environment that will allow you to do a lot of things that are not necessarily very um, costing you a lot, but you can, you'll be able to navigate a lot with, with your technology. So I implore you, don't lose that drive, don't, you know, um, don't lose that brilliance, continue to learn, continue to um, have technology in your space and, uh, and, and don't be daunted by the challenges that you will be faced with. So I celebrate with you today. As I said, it has been so inspiring to see the teams, to see what has been presented. And I think you um, globally, you would be able to compete anywhere with anyone because what, you have, what you're doing today is really, really awesome. And so I congratulate you and your facilitators for bringing this to us today in this virtual environment, something that I think most persons would not believe would be possible for a School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. So, and thank you and please enjoy your day. Thank you very much, Dr. Sutherland. Thank you so much. And continuing with your theme, because continuing with your theme, we have two more presenters. We have Dr. Michelle, um, sorry, Dr. Michelle Wright Miller and Mr. Adrian Harrison, who are actually our external examiners. And they're going to give us some of your thoughts on some of the, oh, sorry, give their thoughts on some of the things they have seen some of our previous students do. 
Dr. Miller is actually a previous lecturer here at SHTM and Mr. Harrison um, is a former student and he is actually now the sales manager for Margaritaville. Um, he's a sales manager, I'm sorry, for Margaritaville Caribbean Group. So starting with Dr. Miller, all you Dr. Miller. Hi. I'm doing very well, thanks, how are you? I am good, thank you. It's a proud moment for me today to see this virtual or is a webinar. So, so let me go in. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Kelly, for giving me the opportunity to speak this morning. I've had a long partnership with UTEC, firstly as a student with CAS, and then returned in 2011 as an adjunct lecturer in the School of Hospitality. Having facilitated in various modules since then, I'm able to appreciate the culmination in what is known as the major project. And many students fear this time and also look forward to it because they know they're coming to the end. It gives the students the opportunity to bring a real world perspective to the academic background that they have been exposed to over the past four years. It is well placed at, at the end of the degree, so it serves as a perfect transition into the world of work. World of work today can take on various scenarios. It can be self-employed, remote work, hybrid, and even combinations of these options. SHTM made that successful pivot, overcoming the teething pains to online classes, online external evaluations, and today a webinar. Again, seizing the opportunity to give the students a real world experience which UTEC has come to be known for. One of the most significant skills brought out in the major project is collaboration. And it is that skill that has been most evident in the virtual evaluations. The inter-collaborations between the group members and their faculty supervisor, intra-collaboration with other groups, and the collaborations with students from other faculties. The virtual booths have been impressive. This skill of a, of a collaboration will serve the students well as they transition from student to employed. Major projects have produced amazing works and ideas and have the potential to offer meaningful impact to people's lives, communities, and industries. Keep up the great work, SHTM faculty. You have shown resilience. Thanks again, Dr. Kelly, for inviting me today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Miller. Thank you so much for your kind words. And moving on to Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison, take it away. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to be a part of the program today. I am actually quite pleased to be a part of this, especially considering that I am a graduate of the program and maybe one of the 10 or so percent of the entire class that decided to stay and make a career in the industry. I must say it gives me great pleasure uh, to look at, to vet these projects, to assess them and um, to see the ideas that are coming from the students. Um, I have seen some fantastic projects. I've seen some excellent presentation and I can tell you that this experience is something that will carry you forward because I can remember, I must have done at least probably about 50 presentations during my four years in the program. And this helped me when I was working at Expedia, for example, we were better presenters than all of our co-workers. And I must commend the facilitators for the program because it really helps in the working world. I implore the groups to seriously consider bringing a lot of these ideas to life because I believe that they can contribute significantly to Jamaica's tourism product and improve the, the product overall. And please don't just let these projects gather mass, mass, you know, they are worth bringing to life. They are your ideas. You did the work, you did the research and you should actually copyright them as well because they, you can go back and pick them up later on in life and bring them, bring them to fruition. Thank you again 
for including me, for being a part of it. And I commend all the groups for sticking to it. Um, I think the Minister of Tourism invented this word, um, your stick to itiveness, um, especially considering the challenges with the pandemic and to see that you went online and you made it happen. I really commend you for your efforts and um, you, can, you will see that group work is important and having the facts to back up your statements is super important as well. And wishing you all the best going forward and I will continue to contribute as an examiner as long as I have the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Harrison. We appreciate all your kind words. Thank you very much. Now, moving on to our penultimate team, team number 10. Take it away, team number 10. Good morning, everyone. My name is Janiel Hines. Food waste is a serious environmental and social socioeconomic issue in the hotel sector globally. The improper disposal of food waste has many negative effects on a destination's environment. My team and I explored to what extent is food waste managed in selective hotels in Ocherius, Jamaica. Handing over to Kayla to discuss our booth. Thank you so much, Janelle. So our booth will feature an open roof that will generate the open and welcoming environment that Food for Thought is bringing forward. As mentioned before, Food for Thought main initiative is to reduce the food waste in hotel industry. And we'll be representing that at our booth. There will be a visual display of the proper composting procedures, as well as a composting bin that is tactically placed to the side to collect the leftovers from our refreshments from my food station. I now present to you Food for Thought. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, team number 10. No, we're almost at, almost at the end. Not quite, but almost. So that means team number 11, it's all you. Team number 11. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rashida, and I'll be presenting for group 11. A pleasant morning to all my fellow classmates, lecturers, guest speakers, and to those who are viewing online. Today, I present to you an external an examination of the efficiency of ginger production in Jamaica. This theme was researched because it has been proven that ginger production in Jamaica has drastically decreased since the 1990s. Our program, the Ginger Generations Limited, is set to implement a new technology along with the help of our partners to aid in increasing the production of ginger in Jamaica. Please join us in exploring our virtual booth. I thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our booth display of our company, Ginger Generations Limited. We will be collaborating with the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, Food and Agriculture Organization, the Ginger Working Group, and also the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and Fisheries. We will be creating an effective program that targets our local farmers for training in new technologies, such as the single bud nursery technology. Now, this monitor showcases an experimental farm that we will be creating with the help of these companies, and also workshops will be held where these representatives are present so they can teach farmers before training them these shall showcase ginger and ginger products such as herbal teas biscuits and juices and also hors d'oeuvres are on display with ginger used as the main component brochures are also available so individuals can read more about the program that we are implementing with continuous practice of the single bond nursery technology and reinforcing good agriculture practices to our farmers, we will be able to rebuild the ginger industry at a faster pace and make Jamaica one of the top producers of ginger again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, team number 11. Now, bringing to the stage again, our head of school, Doctor, if not, keeps calling her doctor. She is not doctor. I know, not doctor. Mrs. Ware. Doctor, yes. yes. No, 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 no. We have had that conversation. Many times. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. And what can I say? Congratulations, students, Dr. Kelly and the team and everyone. I mean, it's wonderful sitting and hearing students presenting their work in a forum like this, to see the hard work that has been put into bringing this to fruition. I can't add much more to what has been said by Dr. Miller, um, Dr. Sutherland and Mr. Harrison, because the words resonate with what's happening in the world of tourism today and the trust that we are putting behind tourism that we at SHTM are working to support, not just through the students that we um, have to shape for the world of work, but in exhibiting the projects and the work of the lecturers and supported by the admin technical team and everyone. And I just want to add that this work, as was stated earlier, must not stop at the end of this webinar presentation. The Minister of Tourism and the World talks about the Blue Ocean Strategy. And these are creative initiatives that can contribute to where we're going forward to in the world of tourism in Jamaica. And I just want to say that at the end of the day, you know, we have pivoted and we have done well in SHTM. We continue throughout the pandemic and we have ensured that we have delivered and, and honed students who have the capabilities and capacity to demonstrate competencies that are not seen regularly, innovation and creativity that is showcased here today. So, I sit, I just had a meeting with the minister and another meeting with the Tourism Enhancement Fund and building onto a concept that the ministries were putting forward and building on in terms of building tourism innovation incubators. So stay tuned because a lot of these showcased initiatives and efforts coming out of major projects is a demonstration of some of the things we need to take to that forum. I just want to congratulate Mrs. Hedley Smith also, who heads the Tourism Action Club, where we had a winner in the Tourism JTB Innovation Competition, not a SHTM student, but joined our Tourism Club and went to Dubai as a winner of that competition. And tomorrow, I'll be in a forum where his work will be presented and we have gotten the accolades because SCHTM is, does not operate in a silo. And the projects presented today demonstrates that the hospitality and tourism industry is not only about sun, sea and sand, but we have moved forward 
to educate, excite, all the ease that we talk about now in tourism. And I invite everyone here in this forum, on the virtual, in the virtual world, next week in our hotel, not officially open, we'll be continuing to showcase excellent work of our school, our pastry department, our pastry school, pastry program, will be showcasing gluten-free products. We are also showcasing work that was done in our food styling, writing and photography module. And we also have the assessment piece, the bar extravaganza. All of that happening between next week, Tuesday and Thursday. So SHTM Day, big up. SHTM, SHTM, big up, big up. Because we are a school that's innovative, creative, and in sync. With, the, with what is happening in the world today. And I just want to thank everyone and to reinforce what our examiners, Dr. Miller and Mr. Harrison have said, you know, we just continue to grow because if we don't grow, we are going to become stagnant and die. So I just want to say thanks to everyone. Well done, planning team. Um, a lot of persons who have supported this initiative we are here today with SHTM 2022, had challenges last year, but we are back, we are impactful, and we will continue to let persons understand. SHTM is not a cook shop. We are developing professionals in many different areas, because people don't understand that we don't just cook, we're not cook. We are a culinary institute, we provide and develop hospitality and tourism professionals. And we have representation right here in the room, in our judges, in our examiners, in our uh, um, academic staff, in our admin staff. And we want to remind people, we're not a cook shop. And we are the biggest and best school in the university with the capabilities to match anybody, anywhere, anytime, and I will challenge anybody to take us on. So well done, SHTM Day, organizers, contributors, judges, examiners, everyone, students in particular, go out. You have had challenges. All of us as students have challenges. That's what makes you better, bigger and better. But I end with the mantra, make what you have presented today, make it happen, because these are entrepreneurial initiatives that you can move forward at the end of your time in this virtual space today. Bigger, better, always SHTM. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ware. Thank you very much. Now we have come to the end of SHTM day. If you've ever had me as a lecturer, at the end of the day, when it's time for grading, I always say, you have two choices. Choice number one, I can be nice. Choice number two, I will tell you the truth. And majority of you say, chef, tell me the truth. So I'm going to tell you the truth today. Y'all did a fantastic job. Good job, SHTF. Good job, good job. Two years ago, we never thought that we could have been in an environment like this. COVID slap us, but guess what? SHTM said, no, no, we're going to bounce right back up. You never thought two years ago we could be putting on something like this. But you, the students of SHTM, you dug deep, you pulled it out, and you did it. Lots of hard work, sleepless nights, sleeping in class. I know I've seen some of you, but you made it happen. So turn on your mics and give yourself a very loud round of applause. Good job, SHTM. Good job. Good job. So, thank you everyone for participating in SHTM Day 2022. And I'm passing it on to Mrs. Sharman Hines Smith. Mrs. Hines Smith, all you. All right. Can you hear me? I'm yes, on my phone. So help me if you. <laughs> I'm sure you can hear me. Well, let me tell you the students did remarkably well. And students, please allow yourselves to breathe now, exhale, because you've been holding breath and 
um, working hard, pulling sleepless nights, wondering how you're going to get together. Job well done. So thank you very much for your contributions. Thank you for your efforts. Um, this really just speaks volumes about what SHTM can do. And as my, as our head of school said, you know, the sky's the limit for everybody here. Just to extend a few more um, thank yous, and we'll head of school cover quite a, a, a bit of them, but just to reiterate, thank you, Nardine, Dr. Andrea Sutherland, for being present, for her words of encouragement. Of course, thank you, our head of school. I mean, always um, our little, should we call it our, our own pocket rocket, our, our version, our tiny version of, of, of encouragement and power and vitality. Um, thank you, our guest speaker, Ayana, once again, I know Amar Amariah, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly, did a beautiful job thanking her. So I want to thank him for thanking her. Um, Dr. Kelly, no, Dr. Donna Kelly, our major project coordinator without whom, you know, none of this could really have come together. And she was really, she's really guided us along this whole virtual path because we had, I think we, we had this, a similar showing or staging last year. So really happy for, for having her aboard and as well as keeping the students grounded and able to, to put out their best efforts. Um, also want to thank, of course, our external examiners for coming on board this um, for this, this presentation here, the virtual presentation. And for those who assisted along the way, our assessors, our supervisors, all the members of staff who encouraged our students and had helped them held, held their hands and helped them to get everything together. Thank you for that as well. Um, what am I leaving out? Our viewers online, watching in the YouTube world, I hope we have plenty of persons out there enjoying our, our staging here and who hopefully have questions you can throw them in the chat at any time. Or, or if you have any other words of encouragement to pass on, we thank you for those. Encouraging words there are for being present. We let, we, we, we're very happy that you're here with us. Um, our MC, Shani. Miss Levy, thank you so much for your energy. It was really great. Um, I think Miss Ellisbeth has a little encouragement there, a little virtual certification. <laughs> so that I, I can't barely see it. So this is for Miss Shani Levy. Thank you so much for your energy, your vitality, your vigor, everything you brought to us here on the staging. Really appreciate that. Our, um, who is it now? Our, Support or tech support, LTSU, Miss Elliot in particular. Thank you so much for being on board because listen, this was a struggle for us in the beginning, but I'm so happy we came on board finally and we're able to pull it all off. Um, we have our live stream going. The students were able to present their their mini product, their mini um videos, and everything came together nicely. I'm sure everybody is very pleased with the end results. And finally. Last but not least, I would love to thank, extend thank you to Mrs. Headley Smith, my, I don't want to say partner in crime, because this is not a crime, but she is a, my colleague who, well, I, I think I more assisted her than we work together, but I think she did more of the work <laughs> because she's a tech person behind, I'm not technical, technologically savvy at all. Mrs. Headley Smith, you pulled it off, job well done, without you, it would not have come together as it has. Uh, things were late, but we made it happen. We, I mean, we, we kind of almost cried over this thing, but we did well. <laughs> All right. So that is just it from me. Thank you, everyone. Uh, wonderful event. And I'm sure everybody is well pleased with how it turned out. Back to you, Shani. So thank you, everybody. And as you're about to leave, wave bye-bye to the virtual world. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Open your mics and say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well done, guys. Thank you. Well done. Good job. Excellent. Good job. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. The shakers, the people making a difference, who never shy away from a challenge, who are never afraid to dirty their hands, to jump in and get things done, who are never afraid to fail, to take a risk, to learn. You know them and aspire to be like them. And you can, because there's always room for greatness. Apply today. University of Technology Jamaica, the birthplace of greatness.
Podcast.